Good morning, good morning everybody. So lovely to see you this morning. Miracle Monday. So um, it's so great. So great to have another week to uh, worship the Lord and just do amazing things for Him. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for this Miracle Monday. We thank you that at the start of this week, we are really pumped up because of your great love and your plan and your purpose nothing can uh, uh, destroy or delay or break down what you have purposed for us in this day and in this age and so we um, we do not allow our hearts to be troubled we are ready on the front foot because you have called us to pursue overtake and recover all so even when the enemy comes in like a flood you are there raising up a standard we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we are at the beginning of a new week, and one week runs into another, and lockdown um, is a reality, but at the same time, we are making the most of the time that we are under this um, genre, if I can call it that. And I, I want you to know that it will not last forever. And when the Father stands up in the heavenlies, all of these things move out of the way. I know that there are many of you that are starting to be get, beginning to uh, get despondent and uh, beginning to believe that um, the conspiracy theories are not so far off after all. And you are looking, looking on Facebook, looking to the prophets saying, now what? Is this good news or bad news that we are in? Are we in a um, enclosed in a vessel that is slowly sliding down the hill? Are we being plundered? Are we being robbed? Are we being lied to? One thing I can tell you is this, that the Lord speaks and the Lord speaks on time. And the Lord prepares his children for the seasons that we are going into. So we know over the times that I have been speaking, that I have spoken on the warfare that there is to get out of Egypt and get into the promised land. Not the promised land of heaven, the seasons that God wants to give us on the earth. He said to Abraham, you shall be the father of many nations. And he said to Joshua, whatever, as far as your eyes can see and where your feet go, this I have given unto you. So we cannot deny that God does want us to have authority in the place that we live right now on the earth. That we build up through trials and tribulations and God's schooling, we build up um, a weight of glory. Uh, not for when we get to heaven, but for on this earth that the kingdom of God will be advanced. Now, this kingdom isn't a eternal kingdom on the earth. The eternal kingdom is the new Jerusalem that will come down when heaven and earth are renovated by fire. There's a lot of things in your life that are still to come. And so I want to suggest to you that instead of getting... Um, instead of getting despondent about this day and this hour, that you begin to ask the Lord what He wants to be for you and what He wants to do through you in this time. The, in the uh, Gospels, uh, Jesus says, Will I find faith on the earth when I return? And so delay brings disappointment. And so from the 70s or even the 60s and the 50s, there were prophecies of revival for South Africa and how the, the fire would start in the south and move through this continent. And then when the continent is alive with revival that the Lord was going, will send us, not was going to, will send us to the nations of the world and um, there are good days and there are bad days and there are days that we think, will this ever happen? And you almost want to go scratch and say, where did this original prophecy come from? Well, I want to assure you that there's a book written by Andre Bart where he has documented the prophecies 
the fire prophecies from the very start until now. And they are extremely, extremely consistent. You know, if somebody says to you, is the Bible true? We know that through studying and through a teaching that we have been taught, and it is true that the Bible is made up of 66 books written over a period of X amount of years by so many different authors under the uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And when they formed the canon of scripture and brought it all together, uh, scripture interprets scripture. And so there sometimes appears to be inconsistencies, but when you look at it against the whole counsel of God, you will see that the word of God is consistent. And so out of that place of his promise and his love letter, he has shown us that it started with a couple in the garden and it ends with the marriage feast of the Lamb. The whole of God's plan is based around covenant and God is the one that initiated the covenant with man. Man didn't say, listen, God, I've got a good plan. If I give it to you in writing and you can see that I understand you, will you, be, will you cut covenant with me? Or will you, uh, yes, will I want to have a covenant with you? No, 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 it didn't work that way. Jesus was the covenant. Jesus is the one. There is blood involved in the covenant and Jesus was the one that set the covenant in order. He, um, he died for all that we can come into a covenant that he put in place. Do you ever think that he would break his covenant? He watches over his word to perform it. His name is truth. His name is truth. And therefore, he is consistent to what he has promised. And I've been thinking about and musing over this word consistency, faithfulness are two words. If you are faithful as he is faithful, morning by morning, he doesn't say Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday's new mercies you'll see. He says, morning by morning, new mercies I see. That's from the hymn writer. Great is thy faithfulness, O God our Father. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. O God my Father. Hey. And so in our walk with God, the, the key to our walk with God is that we, um, we understand the covenant that he has made with us. He is a covenant maker, not a covenant breaker. And the covenant that he has made with us is that he has sent his son Jesus to die for us, to ratify that covenant, to bring it into place that he will care for us, love us, protect us, surround us, and keep us all the days of our life, that he'll work in us, work through us. He is, the, that word again comes up, consistency and faithfulness. As you are consistent in your walk with God, it will release the faithfulness of God. Um, the children of God, put down the stones at Ebenezer and said, thus far has God brought us. We've even done some services or conferences when we ask people to take their shoes and bring them to the front as an indication that we are on holy ground and thus far God has brought us. The front wall of the place that we gather as a congregation is full of oily hand marks as we put oil on our hand and we stand with our hand against that wall. 
even as the children of Israel would go to that western wall, we use that wall as a place of consecration and a place of private interaction with God. And if you come and you put your hand on that wall, uh, uh, nobody will come and minister to you. They will leave you in your private space. It's an indication that you are working uh, through things or you are engaging with a faithful God. Because we are human, we rely very heavily on things that are measurable. And that's why the anointing oil is so powerful, because it's something that we can see. And we know that there is power in anointing people with anointing oil, as it was spelt out in the word we also know that laying hands on the sick that there is an anointing on that covenant that they will recover we also know that as we drink of the cup of the blood that was shed that represents his blood and we eat of the bread that represents his body broken, that there is power in those emblems because he says, do this as often as you meet together in remembrance of me. The day will come that he will pick up that cup and drink with us. We're in a season where I see a picture of us going through a door the door is open for us to go into a supernatural realm of encountering God. But we've got our arms and our legs spread and we are screaming because we don't want to go through that door. Why would we not want to go through that door? Mostly people find it hard to go to the face place of God because they feel unworthy. And as they go to the face place of God, they are already thinking of ways in which they might have disappointed the Lord. But the Lord Jesus says, by my blood, you are forgiven. By my blood, you are washed from all unrighteousness. I have removed your sins as far as the east is from the west. They are no more. They are no more. And so we can come boldly into his presence in the season that he is inviting us into the face place. He's not inviting us into his face place for heavy instruction. He's inviting us as in the Song of Solomon to come away with him, that we will escape like a bird from the fowler, that we will escape the things that we are seeing happening around us. Because when you go into his presence, everything else on the earth becomes strangely dim. I want to assure you, other than the only way to change what is happening on the earth is to pray and to come into the chambers of the Lord and start to dialogue with him about what you are seeing happening around you. And as you see more and more controls coming into place, there is, if you are honest, a deep fear inside your belly that this could go horribly wrong. The restriction of no longer being able to hug your children or your grandchildren can be very overwhelming. Your identity is under fire and you're not sure. Do I fight this? Do I freeze up and get into depression? Or do I run away from it? Fight it, freeze or flight. Fight, freeze, or flight. We need to run into the arms of our Father. Has there been such stuff?
before in the generations past. Of course, there have been great atrocities on the earth and in the earth over many seasons from Holocaust to genocide. And in it all, and all the prophecies, even Samuel, Dr. Samuel Doctorian, he got prophetic word or revelation from heaven about the things that would happen in the different continents of the world. And all of it was um, floods, tsunamis, uh, all, uh, earthquakes. And he said, Lord, is there no good news? And the Lord said to him, I will protect my people. So even when shaking and these things come, and you're probably saying, Rose, I think you've gone over this before. Consistency will change your mind. Consistency will move the fear of the unknown out of the way because even though our circumstances and the outcome of what's going on is not measurable, the certainty in this situation is the faithfulness of our God. Faithful he has been and faithful he will be. So you can only run for so long saying all the right things to keep yourself buoyant and then suddenly you realize when the light is out at night Oh, this could be something very different to what I think I'm dealing with. Jesus, who started a good work in you, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And what are we meant to do, even in an adverse backdrop? Did David say, oh, I've got all these wars in my hands now and I keep having to go up with my men and overcome and pursue and all those things. And it looks so lovely in, in the written account, but they must have feared for their lives. They must have, they needed to know that the war that they took on was by God's directive. That's why uh, David always went before the Lord. He did not assume on an old method to get a, a different result. You see, the same method is going to get you the same result, even if the result was a poor result. If you keep going back to the same method, and uh, nothing is going to change. And so we have to incline our ear to the Lord in this miraculous season that we're living in. And we have to hold up the banner of His promise. The banner over me is love. My beloved is mine and I am his. And his banner over me is love. He took me to his banqueting table and his banner over me is love. Though a thousand will fall at your right hand and ten thousand at your left side, the Lord will sustain you. Where two or three agree on a thing, so how are we going to move into our new season? We're going to move into our new season by prayerfully surrendering and trusting a Father that has never, ever disappointed us. I want you to think about some of the seasons that you've been through. I went through the season of the Lionel with the stroke. I've been through a season of my father being very ill. I've been through seasons where up all both sets of parents have gone to heaven. I've been through a season where my sister-in-law went to heaven prematurely. I've been through a season where my father was attacked in his home. I've been through seasons of a church where uh, I've been at beds where babies have died, even though we had the faith to see them changed. I've been in a season where we spent 15 hours praying over a, a, a precious friend that we asked the Lord to bring them back to life. And he didn't. He didn't. But it changed us. It grew us. It pushed us into what the apostolic anointing looks like. That we pray for the sick and we raise the dead and the rest is up to God. But we need to go there. 
but I've also been through amazing seasons where God has proved himself faithful and true. Where Lionel was moved from a government hospital because we had no medical aid. And one family took it upon themselves to pay for him a quarter of a million rand into the hospital's bank account to bring him all the way through uh, a stroke, kidney failure, pneumonia, and money finances came from friends around the world for all the medical extras that he needed. God has never left us. He has never forsaken us. I have ridden in my car, driven in my car on a fumes of petrol and watch my petrol gauge go up as God supernaturally has filled the tank. I've had experiences in heaven. I've had visitations from heaven to earth. The Lord has sh uh, shown me nations and things happening in nations. I can only say that in the days, whether it is good or whether it is not so good, your consistent love for Jesus and his faithfulness will carry you all the way through. Yes, weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Great is his faithfulness. Maybe you are surrounded with um, um, things that you need to decide, but the lack of power or authority to make the decision because the decision has been taken out of your hand. How powerless that makes one feel. Don't look to your powerlessness. Look to God's powerfulness. God can hide you even in a crowd. I've only been to the shops maybe three times in this time of lockdown. And there are da those days that I went there and I said, hide me, oh God. I've bypassed queues. I've gone through into the shops. I've done what I need to do and bypassed everything and got in my car. And I said to my children, I either look extremely scary or God hid me because I was in and out there under God's radar. We have not because we ask not and when we ask, we ask amiss. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. Is it ideal that we can no longer fly to other nations when our families are now scattered in a global community around the world? Is that great? Is that good news? Don't think so. In 2010, the father said to me that the upgrading of the airports and the stadiums and the roads for South Africa for the Soccer World Cup was not about a soccer ball. It was for the gospel and that the nations would come and go at those airports and the stadiums would be filled with the sound of his voice, a sound of worship unto him. Did he change his mind? No. No. We ain't seen nothing yet. Stir up your most holy faith. Do not dress yourself for the season that you're in. The season that you're in will keep you in your pajamas and your slippers and in depression and despair. You need to dress for where you're going, not for where you're living. Keep alert. Keep awake. Stay on the forefront. And I want to say this to you. Be consistent to follow him, to love him, and to encourage one another. I want to encourage you for your consistency in loving God and loving those around you. Ask him today. Ask the Lord today, first of all, to bless you. You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask him this. Go before his throne and ask him how he wants to bless you. Don't think that I am sitting in a cozy corner 
No. Every day I have to trust the Lord for myself and for my family that I live with, my children. There's nobody working in our household now. But guess what? God will supply. God will supply. When my husband and I were called to ministry, our children were one, three, and five. When we were called to do a church, not called to ministry, that was earlier. Our children were one, three, and five. And thank goodness we were young and so full of the Holy Spirit. When you're filled with God's presence, these things don't seem to get to you. Later on, as the church grew and my husband was in Bible school, and there were days that I pushed the prams around where we lived and cried my eyes out and called on heaven to get us through. But this morning as I woke up, I felt the Lord say, Rose, your consistency has brought you here. There's so many wild and wonderful teachings and I'm not discounting that. Every time we get an, a deeper revelation, it's so exciting. But in the core of your being, being love God and love those around you. Love the house of God and support the vision of the one that God has placed the vision on. I think my greatest pain is the disunity in God's house. How we can close down other ministries with our mouth and go, that guy, he was a drug addict. That guy, he blew it in ministry. That person, oh, I have nothing to do with them. Oh, they're extreme. Oh, they're into kundalini spirit. Oh, no, I would never watch that person's live. I'm not talking about anybody saying that about me. They might. I'm not sure. But I'm saying about how quickly we judge one another. We cannot have too many chiefs and not enough Indians. We were all born to follow. We all lead in our private capacity as a mom, as a dad, as a worker, and in our own ministries. But when it comes to the kingdom and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, let's get behind who we, be we believe has found the truth. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So instead of having um, three billion, everybody doing their own thing, doing what is right in their own eyes, Two is better than one. When two lie together, there's warmth. Let us this morning get into the place of agreement to support one another, to get behind the visionaries, for God is busy raising apostolic, prophetic streams, not coverings, streams from heaven to earth. Let us all get into that flow and be going in the same direction. How powerful it is when the, God, when the kingdom as an army are all chanting the same sound. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, children of God, for your consistent love for Father, for Jesus, for the work of the Holy Spirit. Your consistent love for one another. In over 35 years of ministry, I still have some of the original people. That is consistency. That is honor. That is faithfulness unto God. Lest two, uh, lest two agree, they cannot walk together. Have you asked... 
Have you asked the Lord what it is that he wants you to get, put your weight behind at this time? Thank you for your consistency. Thank you, children of God, for your faithfulness. Not firstly to man, firstly to God. That you have step by step taken the kingdom forward. And this is where you're standing today. The Lord is proud of you, and so am I. That there are days that you don't feel you've made any progress forward. But I assure you, you've not gone backwards. You have kept your stake in the ground. You have put your stone down and said, thus far, God has brought us. If you have access to go outside your little front door, I want you to find yourself a stone today. Pour some oil over that stone. Put it in a place that you'll see it every day. As a prophetic sign, thus God, far, God has brought me. Thus far, God has brought us. Having begun a good work, he's not going to leave us. Count it all joy, even though you fall into all kinds of diverse circumstances. God is for you and not against you. Though everything is shaking, what cannot be shaken will remain. You will not be shaken out. You will stand the test of time. Cast off a bad report. Cast off doubt and unbelief. Cast off what other people's opinions. Get into agreement. I say again, who are the guests at your table? Or should I say, who is sitting at your table. God is going to give you three or four faithful people that will be understand you. And it's not just one person and they have four. Each one has their own table of four or five people that will lift up your arms when they are tired. That will put a hand in your back when you feel like you are failing. God is for you and not against you. May this miracle Monday, I just want to go back to something I, was, I had started and didn't complete. Ask the Lord how he wants to bless you today. And then call it in. No, it's not prosperity. It's not a pros prosperity gospel I'm preaching. It's the nature of the Father to take care of his children. And ask the Lord how you can bless somebody else. Fifty-three of you on this Miracle Monday. So good to see you. Wonderful, Juliana. She says, I have a stone from Glencairn Beach just before lockdown. Thank you, Jenny Hardesty. Bless you too. Thank you, Linda. If God is for us, who can be against us? Thank you, Chandra Brown. Amen and amen to that. Thank you, Liesel. Blomstein. Beautiful, beautiful heart. Beautiful heart. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Liz. Rattle, thank you, Val. You guide our steps. That is so true. <laughs> Let us keep the good faith. Let us finish our race. Let us not get weary in well doing. Let us not slack off. Jesus was a covenant initiator, and he is a covenant keeper. Nothing, not life, nor death, not powers, not principalities, nothing can separate you from the love of God. If you go through the water, you will not drown. 
If you go to the, through the fire, you will not be burnt. God is consistent in his nature. If he opened the Red Sea, he will do the nat supernatural, miraculous for us, his children. Call to remembrance and tell it to your children the great miracles and the great deeds of our God. He will not fail us. He will not fail us. Even though many of them didn't see the full picture, they knew that they could trust God. If you love God, you are on the winning side. You will not lose. He watches over here, every hair on your head. He knows them. He's counted them. As he watches over the birds of the air and the lilies of the field, and they don't give one ounce of energy of worry where their next meal will come from or what they will wear for they are so beautiful and they are dressed by the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful Monday. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow on the 10 o'clock live.